Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I edit my content in under five minutes. Now this process is gonna take obviously longer because I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna be talking through the process with you guys. Um, so if you're new to iMovies or you're new to Final Cut Pro, um, this tutorial will help you a little bit, give you a bit more information on how to get started. If you're thinking of Final Cut Pro, I mean it comes with a 90 day free trial. And within 90 days of starting my YouTube channel, I got monetized. So for more information on my process, do hit the link above this video. However, in today's video, we're going to cover four basic aspects of video editing. So inputting the footage and editing the footage, adding an outro, adding music, and making sure you're editing to the beat. So making sure the music you added kind of match the footage as well. So at the beginning of this video, you've noticed the before and after editing of this segment. So without further ado, guys, let's just jump straight into the editing. We we'll start off by creating a library, an event, and a project. Now, this is necessary. You know, I'm not going to go through now how to do those because it's pretty straightforward. Once you fire off Final Cut Pro, you go to File, New, Project, Event, Library. So you start off first by creating a library, event, then a project. I mean, it'll be advisable to start getting used to these hotkeys. So like Option N for an event and, and uh, Control N for a new project. It just makes your life easier going forward because you've got some kind of order to your, you know, to your content editing. You can find your content easier. You know, you can find your projects easier and so on. So um, it is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go into the actual details and setting that up because there are tons of videos on YouTube on that. So we're just going to dive straight into editing. So what I've got here then after setting up my project, you go to Command N. It brings up this screen. Now you need to select your device that you're importing your, your footage from. So you just select the device you need to um, find your, your event in here. So you want to input those footage directly into the event. Find that here. If you haven't yet created the event, um, you can then create it here. So once you've done it at the beginning, you just need to find it up here and then um, input all your um, or your footage you, once you imported that the screen will disappear and your footage will all appear here in your project section so now you just need to drag select your your um your footage all your footage and literally drag it into your project timeline so once you've dragged it into your project timeline you've done the cutting you've done the you know the slicing you're happy with the final product you've done all the editing out then you need to go into your titles these adjustment layers are free to download. Do click the link below this video to be able to download the adjustment layers for free. It doesn't cost anything, but it's really, really useful. And um, you just take the adjustment layer, drag it on top of your, your clips, stretch it across till the end. Now, the reason for the adjustment layers, again, there's tons of videos on this, but it's advisable not to color grade on your clips. So you want to do with the color grading on the adjustment layers, then it just applies to the rest of your clip. If you use Photoshop, you'll understand this a bit more. Um, whatever um, adjustments you make to this um, adjustment layer affects the full clip underneath the whole clip. So once you've dragged the adjustment layer on top, you've kind of got it to the end of your clip. You go into, you go into your effects panel here, all video and audio, color board. If you if that's not showing in your uh, in your setup here, you can type it at the bottom here, color board, and then you just drag this on top of the adjustment layer. Once you've dragged the color board on top of the adjustment layer, this window should pop up, which is the color inspector. If it hasn't popped up, you might need to just click this rainbow looking um, triangle here, and it'll bring it up. Now, the first thing you need to do is just go straight to exposure. Make sure your exposure is correct. Make sure you're happy with your exposure. Now a guideline for this would be clicking on command seven on your Mac keyboard. It brings up this window. It just gives you a bit more guidance onto the level you need to stay within. So the zero line here is where your contrast needs to, you know, roughly be as a guideline. You don't want to go below that zero. So, and you see now the contrast is kind of just about touching that. So I'm just going to click command seven to get rid of it now. Cause I mean, we don't need that technical guidance. You just need to color grade the image to what looks good to your eyes. So if you go back to exposure, we got the global gauge here, which is the master, the dark side, is the shadows you know the white side is the highlights this is the darkest section of your project and this is the brightest side of your project and the mid is everything in between for beginning color grading i wouldn't go too much into the specifics what you need to do is just ignore the shadows the mid tones and the highlight section here until you're really familiar and really comfortable with um you know the details of this i'll just go straight to the master drag it down a little bit 
as you're dragging it down just make sure that the darker section of your image aren't disappearing like the details in those dark section are not disappearing so as soon as it start to disappear then as you can recall just pressing command 7 we get we get that technical um graph up again and we can see that we're just about touching zero so command seven get rid of that again and we can even see by looking at the image that we're kind of losing details here so we don't want to go any lower than that we'll leave it at that level and then move on to the next section of the color board which is saturation and saturation again you um, want to just adjust this I know those shadow midtones and highlights just focus on the master for now and you want to make sure that you're not you know desaturating your image if it is desaturated you want to take it up as much as you can to make it look as realistic as possible you, I mean you don't want to take it all the way to the top because you just look like you know you've been in the Sun for too long and you don't want to do that so just take it up to something a bit more realistic like around there you know you got the images all showing strong colors and you're happy with that it looks fine there so we'll move on to the next section which is color color again the master it just gives an overall feel to your image so you wanna it's kind of sitting within green now so we want to just take it a little bit to the left as you're moving it you see the master section here which is you know the the ones you should be focused on at the moment again until you're really comfortable with you know editing individually the shadows the midtones and highlights this just gives you a quick start of guide to just you know color grading your image as quick as possible and then you just move that to the left i want to give it a bit more orange a kind of a burnt orange look but not too much to ruin the image so once you've uh, so I've got it there at 42 5 percent so I'm happy with that that looks fine and then what we're going to do now we'll done all that we're just going to click onto the film roll here to show the video inspector it kind of just gives you an overall section to the color board if you unclick the effects here it shows you where the images were before the adjustment so you can see you can see what it looks like before and you can see what it looks like after i mean you can go and retweak it if you want so you can go back to this section here and click on the triangle you can then move the master to where you want to be so if, if let's say we want to take it we want to add a little bit more a little, a little bit more tilt to it so we can have it here give it a bit more that smoky like smoky tilky look then that's fine so you can retweak how you want and then we go back into the video inspector and see so we're happy with that again we can go back and tweak it as much as we want but i just suggest lower your contrast a little bit depending on you know the, the darkness and and brightness in your image increase your saturation and then you should be you know that's that, sh that should be enough so once you've done that it's time then for you to add your music so let's let's do that now so you get your music you drop that in there once you've dropped your music in there we click onto the audio and the inspector here we showed the audio inspector now at the moment is at um it's playing a normal so we, let's just let's just play that so we can so that's really loud you don't want you don't want the, the music drowning your drowning your audio on there so click onto the music again I always tend to have mine at minus 25 so you type in minus 25 there it kind of lowers it and gives it kind of sweet how I edit my content in under five minutes very basic it's kind of sweet in the background but then you can change that volume to what you know whatever suits your needs I wouldn't want to have it too loud you want to make sure the music is not drowning your voice in the vo your voice in the in the clip because I you, you want to get across what you're what you're talking about so um, I tend to just keep it at minus 20 minus 25 just loud enough but not drowning so your viewers can understand you know what you're talking about without getting distracted by the music so once you've done that you go to the blade tool which is just be on your Mac keyboard and cut the music to the length of your clip and once you've done you how I edit my content in under five minutes as you're editing you should always be replaying your videos just to make sure that it sounds good and, and you're you're not missing anything there's no highs there's no lows within the audios and everything just falls to sync the music actually goes it's not distracting so once you've done editing your audio 
you're happy with the volume you're happy that it matched the clip and everything runs smoothly you've played it and you're happy with it you then need to fade the end of the audio as well because as you're playing process. it at the end it just cuts out at a set volume so what i'll do if you hover over this at the end there you have like two triangles you know facing the opposite direction so that's the audio fade out and what that does is if you drag it to the left it kind of just creates that nice smooth fade out of your audio so it starts to play More information on that process do hit the link above this and video it's slowly anyway, so let's just goes jump down, down with my to process. zero and that's the end of your clip you could do that at the beginning of the audio a slow fade into sorry about that a slow fade into your clip but i don't i mean i never i never tend to do that because normally when you attach the audio and it starts at the beginning it kind of builds up to to the actual song to the actual um the actual instruments within the audio so i just leave it as it is so once you've done all that i'm just gonna click command five on my keyboard to get rid of that section it's really advisable guys that you get used to the hot keys so command five kind of brings up the the transition and color windows and then command five kind of just gets gets rid of it so um, it gives you the space to have a you know to work with now once you've done that you go straight back into your titles you click onto your titles and scroll down to the bottom here solid once you click on the solids you bring out these custom solids which are built into final cut pro so that the standard ones i'll just drag one at the end here and just kind of make it a bit smaller to not too long this is what shows after your clip is ended so you don't want it to be too long just enough to you know put in your end message so what i normally do is just put in my um my channel logo so i'm just gonna drag that up into there so this is off my on my desktop so i've got it saved in the in a in one of my desktop folder so i'm just drag that on top of here just there after my clip is finished i've got my logo showing so you just click onto here transform tool that just basically makes me you know give me the ability to to structure it so I don't want it down here I'm just gonna move it to the center just about there I mean the sky is kind of the limit to what you want to do at the end you could put in your logo you can put in them um, you can put in a list of names you know end credits and so on and um, you can then change the song because I normally do that change the audio at the end Cause if you have a smooth audio running through your clip playing in the background at the end you can maintain that or you can then you know put in something a bit more up upbeat so um, the same process again, you find an upbeat audio. Epidemic Sounds is where I get all my copyright free audio from. Let's just add this here. So this is an audio I just dragged in, kind of upbeat. Find the, the drop in the beat. All right, so there's it. The, that's the drop there. So I'm just gonna slide it and cut it as close to the drop and drag that in at the end. Click B to cut the rest out let's go back to this so the drop is there drag it in a little bit matching the drop too so i want to close this in a little bit let's find a space don't want it to overlap here you go so with my editing process so that's perfect it's on the beat and that's what I mean by um, editing it on the beats because you want to drop to just hit when the clip ends and your next, um, you know, your final credits um, begins. So it's, it's, it kind of flows smoothly. You can then go on to put finishing touches on this like transitions and things. So let's, um, let's quickly add a transition, something a bit basic. So we go to objects, let's select the, let's select the cube. So we'll stick the cube in between. So once you've added a transition after you've done the audio, sometimes it's um, it's out of sync and you got to drag the drop into where it should be the audio drop. So um, let's editing just try process. this. Sorry, let's go. My editing process. That's fine. Once you're happy with the drop, you then just want to do the fade at the end again, so it just ends smoothly with this fade out of the of the audio. So let's just try that. Oh, that's perfect then once you've got the outro as we have here and we're happy with it you can then kind of replicate this process for an intro as well if you want but as it stands it's perfect it's fine i'm happy with it once you get more familiar with all the options you have available in final cut pro you can go in and tweak it to the nth degree as far as being worthy for youtube i mean you've kind of got it all here and it's ready to go 
so um what i'll do now is then just go straight up to edit deselect all because you don't want you know you don't want any of your clips to be selected which will affect your rendering process and then go here to this little square with the arrow popping out of it click master file next you chose the location to where you want to save it i'm just going to click cancel on that because um, we don't need to save that project it's just for demonstration purposes once you've saved it it takes a few minutes to render in here it tells you sharing tells you how long it's gonna be in percentage wise and then you're good to go all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you haven't already uh, done so and i'll catch you guys in the next video